Regular flu is what we refer to as seasonal influenza. Uh, it's a strain of influenza that has been circulating in the community since the last pandemic. So typically what we see historically is when a new strain of influenza comes in and causes a pandemic, that strain sticks around and, and, and comes back every year and causes seasonal flu. What we have is two strains of influenza circulating the, the, the globe every year, H3N2 and H1N1. And those are our seasonal flu strains. And that's why every year when you get a vaccine, your, the vaccine will include the latest components to protect you against H3N2 and seasonal H1N1. The seasonal flu vaccine contains uh, components of the H3N2 vaccine and the H1N1 vaccine. And the hope was that uh, for people who had been vaccinated uh, with the seasonal flu vaccine, since it did have H1N1 in it, or even those people who had recently maybe H1N1 infection that would provide some protection against swine flu. Unfortunately, it looks though, uh, and the evidence is there, that the swine flu, the H1N1 pandemic strain, is quite a bit different from the seasonal H1N1. So different, in fact, that that vaccine provides no cross protection. People who, uh, who, who develop a uh, influenza-like illness, whether it's seasonal uh, or pandemic H1N1, a large majority will have very minor symptoms, some not even have any symptoms at all, as you can have it and not even be aware that you have it. The classic signs and symptoms of influenza uh, are uh, muscle aches, headache, fever and cough. You got that constellation of signs and symptoms, you likely have influenza. And so when you present to the doctor with those types of things, they may well say, you've got influenza, we're treating you with Tamiflu or Relenza if they feel it's appropriate. And we don't encourage everyone to be tested because it's a burden to the, to the public health laboratories that want to be able to provide a quick, rapid service for those people who really need the test where it's going to make a, a, a change in how those patients are managed. Uh, and, and so when you present to your doctor's office, they, they weigh the evidence and say you likely have it, but since you're good health, uh, you're looking fine, uh, there's no risk factors, there's not somebody at home who is at risk of you transmitting it to that person, we're just going to watch you, we're not going to treat you. However, if you come into the doctor's office and you've got signs and symptoms, cough, fever, headache, muscle aches that suggest that you do have influenza, they may decide to treat you uh, depending on your symptoms. So if you're getting sicker, short of breath, that might be a reason uh, to start antiviral therapy. Or if you're a high risk person, somebody who's pregnant, somebody who has underlying medical problems, somebody under the age of five, but they might also put you on antiviral therapy like Tamiflu. If you've got somebody at home who's immune compromised, or a young child under the age of six months who you may give it to because of the, uh, the high mortality rate in, in that group. There are other viral infections out there that can make it look like you have influenza. We never know, we can't be 100% sure unless a test was done that actually documented that you had H1N1. So if you haven't had that test done, we recommend you get the vaccination because you may not have had it and you may be at risk. It won't hurt to get the vaccine, even if you did have H1N1. Uh, and the vaccine will protect you in case you didn't have it, will give you good protection probably for the next year or two. If I came down with symptoms that uh, made me think that I had a, 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 a respiratory tract infection that was influenza, I mean, the most important thing that would come to my mind first is, what risk am I at? Do I have any of the risk factors uh, that would suggest that I should seek medical attention? If I'm young, healthy, uh, don't have those risk factors, uh, then probably the best thing to do is to try to stay at home, don't expose your colleagues, minimize the contact with your family, good hand hygiene, cough etiquette, uh, and, and also getting your family members, people that come in contact with you to, to practice good hand hygiene because they may well have contaminated the environment that I'm living in. 
We don't want to be going to work feeling lousy and then two days later, if we're so lousy, we're finally going to stay home because when you're most infectious is during those first two days of the illness.